Welcome to Spectral Link Productions video production blog. In this video we're going to start setting up the control rig for one of our first characters. We're already in the process of rigging this character. We've already ran her through Soft Image and Face Robot which we'll discuss in a later video production blog. We're also in the process of doing the muscle sim on her which again we'll cover in another video production blog. The point of this one is we want to start setting up the control rig for her. If you're doing a human character and you are doing mocap, the human IK works rather well, allows you to retarget animations from one character to another, it has its own control rig. If you are working in Motion Builder, you should be quite familiar with it because it's the same stuff, it's been ported over. However, it's not going to work for things like our dog monster, which really doesn't fit a standard template. That's my first issue with it. The second issue with it I have with it is the control rig that gets built, I'm not 100% happy with. We're left with a conundrum. What we want is we want to be able to handle mocap and handle things like the human IK because they do become real time savers if you're mapping animation from one character to another. On the other hand, we want to have a keyframe rig that's going to be more in tune with what we're going to do with the other characters. The last thing we want is two different methodologies in the same production. And since human IK can't do everything, we have to have a traditional keyframe rig on some of our characters. So how do we resolve this? Well, the way I tend to resolve it is I have both rigs at the same time. And I will blend between the two rigs as I see fit. Now, as you see here, all of our joints have been converted to capsules for the muscle sim. What I like to do is start with the actual skeleton, but we've kind of passed that point. So I've gone to an older file and done the work already. So let's go ahead and just hide her real quick. And we're going to import in that file. And there you go. Now I'm going to use this as a basis for creating my rig. Now the first thing I want to do is I want to create my mocap rig. As you can see here, I've already pulled out the roll joints and the wrists and the shoulders and the legs and I've also pulled out the double knee. The human IK is not going to know really what to do with that double knee. So our control rig is going to be just a single knee. So I'm going to do two things. One, I'm going to duplicate that because the other one is going to be our keyframe rig. Now the first thing you might be asking yourself is why don't we just throw a rig right onto our bind skeleton and be done with it. You can do that, but I highly recommend not doing that. You always want a degree of abstraction. First of all, let's say we did build a keyframe rig right onto our bind skeleton, and then we had mocap. How do we get the mocap on the keyframe rig? If you already have a bunch of constraints and IK handles and stuff like that, it becomes a huge problem. If you build a separate rig and then have it drive the bind, you always have an option of building on top of it. You always want to have a degree of abstraction so you have room to move if something changes or you want to add or delete something. So I'm just going to hide the first one and we're going to keep the second one. Now real quickly, I have namespace because I imported it. So I'm going to clean that up real quick. Voila, that's our mocap rig basically right there. The only other thing we might want to do is change the names. Uh, you can really name them anything you want. It's really important that you have a convention. It doesn't matter what convention it is. Just remember the further you get away from the standard naming convention, uh, the more of a manual process it is to hook this up to human IK. Not really a big deal. I mean you're saving about maybe five or ten minutes if you have a hundred characters that can start to have an impact, but you can also script that as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove joint from the name and replace that with mocap control. And we'll just use that same script. We got it all renamed, so now we have our mocap rig. And so for now, we're just going to put that off to the side. That's everything we want. The other thing, except instead of mocap, we're going to put control. This is going to be our keyframe control. And we will be changing the names a lot, actually, so this is just to kind of get things started. And again, this is kind of a hack way to do it. So now let's start working on building our keyframe rig. And what I usually do is I do one section at a time. And let's start with the legs, because the legs are always the more time-consuming one. So here we have our left and right thigh. Let's unparent those. Hide that. We'll hide that. And again, we're going to be changing a lot of names here. So right now, this will become our FK control. Let's rename that 
The reason why is because we were going to have both FK and IK on the rig. So it kind of helps to have them have different names. When you have things with the same name, it tends to make your life a little bit difficult. So we want to differentiate between the FK and the IK controls. And then same here. Let's rename these. So that part is thrilling, I know. The interesting stuff comes when we start hooking up the IK, but the first thing we need to do is we need to get our FK. So now we have these joints, and they're going to serve as our FK, but we really don't want joints there because we're going to get confusing. You don't really want to see joints. What I like having is nothing but NURBS curves as controllers. So that way when you come here to the show you can turn off everything but the first three slots or first four slots and the animator has everything that they need to animate the character. So what we need to do is we need to give these things NURBS curves so that we can see them without the joints being displayed. So how do we do that? Well there's a little trick to that. First thing we need to do is we need to create our curve. go into the EP curve control and I'm just going to create myself a box and there's all kinds of neat little scripts on creating NURBS control types automatically if you have one of those that's fine I just waste time by making the same box over and over and over again actually we want to set that to linear then I'll go into that view And you can see there we have half a box. Now I just have to come through and come through again from the other side. And voila, we have a box. It's a little off center. I'll just take that. Uh, reflections on. Reflection off. And then got the snap to grid still on so we'll just snap that to the middle and then voila we have ourselves a NURBS cube so what do we do with this some tutorials they might show you how to constrain the joints to these cubes but that's not really going to help us because what we want is we want this leg to work in both IK and FK and if it's being driven by constraints the IK is going to get overridden so what we want is not to have this controlled by the shape but have the shape become part of the joint and how we do that? By parenting the shape node to the joint. And that goes back to some basics in how Maya works. If you come in here to your outliner, you'll have the option for display shapes. And now you'll see that that curve has a node underneath it as a child. This is the transform. This is the shape. Pretty much every renderable object in Maya is going to have the same relationship. The transform represents where it is in space, the translation, the rotation, the scale. The shape is everything else. In the case of a NURBS curve, it's going to be the CVs, where the CVs are. If it was a polygon mesh, it would be the vertexes, the edges, the UVs. What represents the shape node changes from object to object. The transforms are pretty uniform. They're almost always the same. So what we need to do is we need to unparent this shape and parent it to that joint. Then the joint will have a shape associated to it. And we have a quick little script to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scale this down. I'm going to scale it down in the shape node so the transform isn't being changed. Actually, I'm going to duplicate that. I always keep once I build one, I always kind of keep it in the corner. Otherwise, I have to build it all over again. duplicate these and notice I'm not really being careful as to how they orientate because once the shape node gets reparented its orientation is all going to change anyway so why bother I'll have to do it all over again anyway so we're gonna come in here to the rigging tools and I got this cute little script here and all that really does is unparents the shape node parents it to the joint or whatever I have selected and then deletes the original there we go that's what I should do hit G to repeat the last command and you can actually knock these out pretty quick I'm 
voila. Now all I gotta do is kind of shape these nerves curves so they are a bit more representative of what we want to use them for. As you can see here, I'm moving them in local axis, but they're going in two different directions. Because the joints, by their nature, once they're mirrored, one has an inverted axis compared to the other. So one is going in positive x, the other one's going in negative x. So what I usually do is then I just scale them along the x-axis. I want to bring these down. And same with these. And right now I'm just kind of getting them in a rough shape. And then what I can do is unhide the polygon mesh. Okay, so, so right now I'm just pulling the NURBS curves to fit the geometry. Uh, we're going to set that to world. the idea. We can clean that up a little bit more later, do whatever we want. Well, that's basically the FK system. The only thing you really need to do now is turn off what you don't need. So let's come in here and I like selecting from the ground up so that way I make sure everything is selected properly. Because the way Maya highlights things, if you select from the top down it's sometimes hard to see. So we'll come into the channel box, and actually I'm getting ahead of myself because if I lock these off, I won't be able to zero note them. Now what the hell does that mean? I have this little script here, it uh, creates what I call a zero note. If I have these selected and I run the script, notice how all my transforms went to zero. Same here. What that has done is that it has created a null that has the same world transformations as the object that was selected and then parented the selected or parented that object to the null. Remember that in Maya all transforms are local. So if you want something to be zeroed out, you parent it to something that matches its world space coordinate so that way this local to this is completely zeroed out. This is what the script does. I had these two selected and created these two nulls. Now notice that the null like this is for the right thigh they're in the same place now the rotation's different but only if you're not looking at the joint orientate does not freeze transformations does not need to freeze transformations because everything in Maya is local look at just the translates just as an example forget the rotations for a minute okay this is at minus 10 87.5 minus 369 so is the joint. So if we parent the joint to that null, the joint doesn't move. So now the joint local to that transform is zero, zero, zero. That allows you to zero out the controls without freezing transforms. Because freezing transforms has two disadvantages. One, what it really does is it messes with the pivot underneath the hood and sometimes that causes problems because then you start snapping things to pivots but they're not really the pivot that you want to snap to and it gets confusing and causes all kinds of problems. That's point one. Point two is let's say that we have to adjust or move this thing. Well if we have to move this and we froze the transforms now we have to freeze them again. If you have something that's locked underneath there it won't freeze. You have to unlock it. It becomes a bigger hassle. Whereas if it's got a zero node you just move the zero node and its transform stays frozen because locally it hasn't moved. Its parent has moved. Everything in Maya is local and if you understand that you can really take advantage of that. And that's all that script does is create that little null 
and parent it there. That's all it does.